also known as the Game Time Guru and also known as the Boise Buckeye. I uh, would love to hear from you guys where you're tuning in from. Now, one of my favorite parts of being a part of this fan base is seeing where everybody reigns, right? It truly is like across the entire globe. It's cool. It extends so far outside of Columbus, and that's why it's awesome to be part of this fan base because wherever you go, you can find a Buckeye fan. Let us know in the comments where you guys are listening from and uh, where you're tuning in. Love to hear about that. Now, my name is Shane Larson. Like I said, I'm just one of the founders of the Scarlet and Great Empire. My business partners are Corey and Johnny. If you guys did not catch the preview video against Penn State, you can go check that video out here on the channel and uh, catch up to that as well because uh, we're getting excited for this game coming up this weekend. But before we get into that game, we have to talk about the injury report. Injuries are tough at Ohio State. This is a weekly thing we're doing. We're trying to keep you guys posted on what's going on with the injuries. It's difficult because Ryan Day and his coaching staff typically don't talk a lot about their injuries. They don't disclose a lot of information, and that's okay, but it makes it difficult to talk about. However, it's important to talk about because we got to know what we're expecting. So today on the show, we're going to be talking about the running back depth. We're going to be talking about the secondary depth. Jordan Hancock was back. Cam Brown's still out. And we're going to be talking about JSN because it's a weekly occurrence. He's, we're trying to figure out what's going on with Jackson Smith and Jigba. But we've got other information to talk about, starting with the running backs and TC Caffey. Okay. So Caffey goes down for the rest of the year. He's got a season ending injury. All that Ryan Day is talking about is saying it's long term. Okay. So now what? In steps, Chip. Trianum. Okay. Chip's coming in to fill that fourth running back spot. He was brought in from Arizona State. If you guys didn't know that already, brought in from Arizona State to normally p- play linebacker. He was a running back slash linebacker. And he played running back over at Arizona State for two years. He's coming over here. Now they're putting him in the fourth spot. Normally that wouldn't matter. Who cares about a fourth string running back, right? TC was a walk on. You know, Chip's a transfer. Who cares about? a four-string running back. Well, Ohio State does because we've seen Henderson and Williams have their ailments throughout the rest of the season. I mean, they look like they're pretty healthy now coming off that bye week and going against Iowa and their tough defense. But we've seen historically throughout the season how they can get banged up pretty quickly. So it's important for the depth of the running back position, especially as we go against tougher defenses such as Penn State, such as Michigan, and potentially in the college football playoffs, As we try to go deeper, we're going to be playing some elite defenses. We need our running backs healthy. So it's extremely important, especially now with Caffey going out and we have Trey Adams coming in there. And I I give him credit. He's got experience. So it's not like we're bringing in somebody who has absolutely zero experience at the position. But we do have to make sure we're taking care of our, our top guys, such as Mayan and Travion like we have to make sure they stay healthy now you can't always do that but that's a big talking point we need the running backs to stay healthy especially with those guys in the four string rotation getting banged up the next discussion we want to talk about is the secondary so Jordan Hancock's back he was in but Cam Brown is out all right it's such a dis- it's such a disappointing topic because you see the glimpses when you know the potential, right? We all know it as Buckeye fans. We know the potential of having a full, healthy squad, especially in the secondary, right? We know that Cam Brown has that potential. He's still out. He was still out against Iowa, struggling a little bit to get healthy. Hancock's finally back after his injury, trying to get back into the rotation. Granted, he doesn't have a ton of reps with, like, I guess, valuable reps, like important reps. So, we're trying to get them in the swing of things because we're seeing the same problem in the secondary. You got to look at this. If you flip the offense and the defense, the secondary, the corners and the safeties are just like uh, the wide receiving core on the offensive side of the ball. Just flip the script on defense. You got to have that. You have, you have to have the cohesion, the, the unit, the unity on the defensive front or on the defensive secondary is the same as when it comes to the receiving core. And we're running into that same problem with Ohio state. That's where I'm a little bit concerned. I mean, we got Hancock coming back. It's extremely important, but we need to have whoever's going to be there. It would be so nice to have them back sooner than later so that we can build that, that unity. We can build all that. We know exactly what to do. The tendencies, everybody knows how everybody plays. 
then you don't run into so many issues with blown coverages or anything of that nature. And again, we can get away with it right now in the secondary. We really can. I don't feel like we're playing any teams that are just going to air raid us right now. But if you go into the college football playoff, you will. And so we could get away with it based on our schedule alone, which is a promising thing. I, I like that. But I would love to have Hancock get his valuable reps this week against Penn State. I would love to see Cam Brown come back and get in the rotation. But I want everybody to be rotating so they can understand the defense. So I'm trying to look forward one more month from now and see where we're at. Like in one month from now, where are we going to be at when it comes to the unity of the defensive secondary? That's the same concept I've been bringing up with JSN and the receiving core. It's a conversation that's come up this week. Did he get hurt against Iowa? That was, you know, we saw him limping off after one of the plays yesterday or what day was it? Tuesday. I can't remember what day it was when Ryan day was talking, he said, the reason he didn't come back into play was because he was on a pitch count. He had 22 snaps. A lot of discussions going out there. Again, this is one of the more difficult things because Ryan Day doesn't disclose a ton of information. But JSN, either way, didn't play the rest of the game. Didn't play the rest of the game against Iowa. 22 snaps. During that time, as you guys know, Ohio State was struggling to get the ball down the field. CJ was struggling in that first half, especially the first quarter. I, I have a hard time with this because the other receivers are beginning to, to understand each other. There's a big difference if you guys, you know, I've said it before on the, on the show. There's a big difference between being the number one option as a receiver and being the number two. There's a difference between playing in the slot and playing wide. There's a lot of differences with, with coverage and the schemes that you see that people are doing. Are they playing underneath? Are they playing up top? What Are they doing cloud coverage? Are they going, man, are they pressing? All this stuff. It changes everything, and so you have to understand how the other receivers are going to get you open and so forth. It is extremely important to get your guys all together and get these reps together so they know where they're comfortable, and that's good for timing and everything with C.J. Stroud. C.J.'s got to be able to have his guys in there, and it's just tough because if they're on a pitch count, I, I think pitch count, if that's truly what it is, is the perfect way to go about it. I know a lot of you guys were commenting before that that's what you'd like to see. Have him come back and be on a pitch count. That's exactly what we saw some of the comments saying. Have a certain amount of reps, get him back in the rotation. That's what we'd like. It was just, for Buckeye fans, I believe, it was just a little unsettling seeing him limp off the field and then not return. And then Ryan Day, first he says it was a pitch count. Now he, he it seems like he's changed his tone a tad when it comes to the injury and the, the availability of JSN going forward against Penn State. Sounds like he's supposed to play against Penn State, um, and they want him to play. But I want to know if you guys think he's going to play. So let me know what you think about JSN, if he's going to play, and if he should be on a pitch count. I would not mind seeing him on a pitch count so he can stay healthy. You want to take care of the guy's health first and then work towards the end of the season. Uh, we need the depth. We have a great receiving core, but it's always great if you can have the depth, and that's so many weapons to have to cover on the defensive side of the ball. It's very difficult to do. Maybe we have to have him on a pitch count. Again, guys, that's that's what I got for you. Talking about TC Caffey, the running back, the the running back depth with Chip Tram coming in there uh, for, to fill that fourth spot. Jordan Hancock's in. Cam Brown's still out. What that does to the uh, the defensive backs, and then obviously JSN on a pitch count or not. What do we expect to see him doing this Saturday? We never fully know, but we're expecting to see him get in there. So appreciate you guys tuning into the show today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We would love to get to 5,000 subscribers before the Michigan game on this channel. Please share it with all of your friends and the rest of Buckeye Nation. And uh, on behalf of the rest of the guys here, God bless and go Bucks.